Hi, this is PDF Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and today we're going to be going over tutorial number 27. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at loading and saving character data. Now we're going to be doing this using Unity's built-in class for player press. And this will allow us to save uh, pretty much anything we really need to. We can save integers, floats, and strings. And then we can also retrieve those integers, floats, and strings. If we look down here at all the classes, or all the uh, methods that are available in the class, we'll probably be going over all of these in this tutorial series. Uh, you should take a moment to read the little description they have here. Uh, where it saves this file on your computer is going to be dependent on uh, what form you're making. If you're making a standalone, you know, it tells you where it's going to be saved. Same thing for Windows, it's going to be saved in the registry. And if you're going to be using a web player. And if you are using a web player, uh, take note that the limit is one megabyte. So you won't be able to store any more than a meg of data. So with that said, let's just go in and open up our project. Now the first thing I'm going to want to do is create a new class. So I'm going to open up my scripts folder, close that, and I'm going to make a new C Sharp script. I'm going to call this script uh, Game Settings. And then open it up Mono Development. Make sure we rename our class. And I'm just going to jump right down to the bottom and create two new methods. One is going to be called save character. Or save character data. It doesn't take any data. And I'll have another one called load character data. And we're going to be using these two functions to actually load and save our character data. Now I'm going to go back to Unity. I'm going to make sure I'm in my character generator scene. You'll notice up here the name has changed. You can attach a script to anything you want. I'm actually going to make a new game object. And I'm going to call it game settings. Now take that script that we just made and just drag it on there. And there we go. I'm actually going to change its name a bit. I'm going to put two underscores at the front and then I'm going to go back to our script. I'm going to create the awake function for this script. So void awake. And then inside of here I'm going to introduce a new function that we haven't used yet. It's called do, don't destroy unload. We'll pass in this. Now what this is going to do is it tells your game when it's running that you do not want to destroy this on load and it's passing in this as in this game object whatever it's attached to so when you're changing from scene to scene all the game objects that you have in your game will actually be destroyed by putting this line here in, in your awake function the game object will actually survive from game scene to game scene so now let's go into unity and take a look at some of the data that we're going to want to save so we'll open up unity we'll just start it up and let's pick something simple to start with. Uh, let's just go with the name. So the name is entered as a string. So if we go back into model development, we'll want to enter the command to save a string. So here's how it looks. You want to go player press dot then the set function. So you'll want to set a float, an integer, or a string. Uh, we're doing a string for the name open parentheses, I'm just going to close the parentheses now and put the colon. Now the first thing you enter is what's known as the key. It's basically like a variable which, which what you're going to name this value so when you go to come back and look it up you can just look it up by its name. And we're going to call it player name. You'll want a comma and then you'll want to enter the value of that string. 
So we're going to want to get a reference to our, your character's name. Now the easiest way to do that, uh, let's take a look at our game when we started up. The easiest way to do that would be to actually instantiate a character and then just have it get a reference to that character and its script. Uh, I was also thinking of making the character stats a singleton, so it would just be ba basically floating out in the ether. Uh, I think right about now we should actually make it create uh, a character, instantiate it for us. So let's do that first. So we'll go back to model development. We're going to go into our character generator script. And if you remember a few videos back when we were creating our new character, when I was putting this line here in, we got a warning every time we started Unity up. It was saying that it could not uh, create a mono behavior using the new keyword. We're going to switch this over to instantiate a prefab. But first we're going to have to make this prefab. So I'm going to create another folder to hold all my prefabs, and I'll just call it prefabs. And I'm going to want to make a game object. So create an empty. I'm just going to zero everything out on it. I'm going to call it, uh, let's just call it player character for now. I'm actually going to put a space in. And I'll attach our player character script to it. So scripts, character classes, player character. There we go. So we'll close that down, open up our prefabs again, we'll create an empty prefab. Now if you've never created a prefab before, what this is, is think of it as a, a blueprint for an object in game. And anytime you want to create one of these objects, you can just drag it up into the hierarchy and it'll, it'll make one. Uh, you can drag multiple ones up into the hierarchy and it'll make multiple instances of this prefab. Uh, but first you have to assign something to the prefab. If you notice right now, it's just a little white block. If we take a game object and drag it onto it, it turns blue. Now in Unity 3.0, I believe it gets a little, uh, something like a scroll or something on it when it's filled. I'll take a look at that later when we're doing Unity 3 stuff again. So let's name this. I want to call mine player character prefab. Now I'm going to take the original that I made. If you notice, it's turned blue, and that is because it's linked to a prefab. And you'll also get this little menu over here now where you can do prefab stuff. So you can uh, select it to a prefab, make it like the current version of a prefab, or you can revert back to the old version of a prefab, or just change the prefab. But I just want to delete it. So we'll get rid of it. And if you take it and drag it on again, you'll notice you get a new one. And like I said, you can drag as many as you want on. So if you're making, I don't know, say, uh, mines, you have some sort of minesweeper game, and you want to put 20 mines randomly on the, the scene, you could just have a script that randomly generated 20 of these things and placed them all over. But we're only going to need one player character. So we'll finish that off. We'll go back to our script. And we're going to want to add a public variable to hold a reference to our prefab. So public. We're just going to have a game object. And we'll just call it player prefab. And if you go back into Unity, now we had attached our character generation script to our main camera, at least I have. And you'll notice down here, you have this variable open up for it. We'll just simply take the prefab, drag it over, and drop it on. 